Hey guys, today we're at Niemeyer's Trailer Sales in Albertville, Minnesota, and we're going to be looking at the 2023 Arctic Fox 29 5T fifth wheel camper. So we have Mitch here with us today. He's going to walk us through the interior and the exterior and show us all the features of the camper. All right, so yeah, we've got the 29 5T Arctic Fox. So as far as the Arctic Fox fifth wheels go, size wise, this one's going to be kind of right in the middle. Um, they do make a couple bigger and a couple smaller. This unit's going to be about 12,500 pounds dry as it is. And then it's going to be right around 35, 36 feet in length. So starting in the back uh, corner here, this is going to be access for your spare tire. So it does come with a spare tire. It's mounted up underneath the rear of the camper. So you actually have a crank and crank that down if you ever need it. Here's going to be your entry door into the camper, so it is more of a rear entry. You're going to have the nice more ride flip up steps, so you can just grab those, flip them up and in. They are assisted with a hydraulic shock, so they're nice and light. doesn't take much effort to flip them up and down. The legs are adjustable. You can pull them in or out, so if you're on uneven ground, you can adjust them so that they're nice and solid with the ground. Nice big power awning up top. So there's a switch to run that inside. You don't have, it's not manual. So you can extend that. And then you do have a nice bright LED light strip on the awning tube that you can turn on as well to help illuminate your camp area outside. Right here, you're gonna have power, 110 volt power. So if you are plugged in with your shore power or running a generator or something, you will have power outside the camper right here. Um, you're gonna have Goodyear tires that comes standard on this fifth wheel, it comes standard on all Arctic Fox fifth wheels. So a good top of the line tire as far as RVs go. Moving forward here, we're gonna have a few things. This is just gonna be venting. So this is going to be for your refrigerator and then this for your furnace. Up top, we do have a few things. Those white circles are going to be your exterior speakers. You can control the volume of those inside. And then you also have an exhaust vent for the fan above your stove. You do have another light outside here, so several lighting options to help illuminate your camp area. Right here, we're going to have a nice exterior storage compartment. So kind of just some extra space. This is going to be underneath the steps inside the camper. So some nice space in there. And then farther forward, this is going to be your main underbelly storage that fifth wheels tend to have. So you can see there's going to be a ton of room in there, lots of room for all your gear and different things. You do have 110 volt power in there as well. Lights, obviously, to help you find your stuff. Okay, kind of more towards the front. The Arctic Fox fifth wheels are going to come standard with 40 pound propane tanks. So that's going to give you 80 pounds total, which is going to be a lot. So you also have an automatic changeover regulator. So as long as you have both tanks open, they'll automatically switch when one is empty. So two 40 pound tanks should last you quite a while. Moving around to the front underneath here, you are going to have your generator ready compartment. So you can see in here, we are going to have wiring, propane lines, things like that pre-run for the optional generator that you can get with this fifth wheel. So the optional generator is going to be an Onan Cummins 4,500 watt generator. That's going to be a propane generator. So it'll run right off of the propane tanks um, on your camper. Um, this compartment can also double as storage. You know, this camper does not have the generator, so it does make good storage space. This compartment is not going to be totally sealed to the outside, but things that can get a little wet potentially or you know, dusty can go in here and you have lots of room for that. So. Coming around to the driver's side of the camper, in the front corner here, you're going to have your battery compartment. So what type of batteries come with the camper is going to vary depending on your dealer, but they do include these nice slide out trays so you can have easy access if you need to service your batteries, check water levels, things like that. And there is space for two of them in there. Right here, you're going to have a solar plug. So this fifth wheel does come with a 45 watt solar panel on the roof that basically acts as a battery tender. 
There is plenty of space for additional solar panels on the roof. And then you can also buy a portable panel that plugs in right here and will give you additional solar as well. These doors are going to be access to the other side of your big pass-through storage. And then we are going to have a few more things in here. So up in the corner right here, you're going to have your control module for the auto level system. So this camper does have the uh, Lippert components six point auto level system on it. That's going to be electric, not hydraulic. And so when you're using the camper, you can just come in and turn this on. You can see this nice big auto level button. Once you're all unhitched from the truck and everything, you just come in here, hit auto level and the camper will level itself. So again, it has six jacks, so it'll take, you know, a couple minutes and kind of go through the motions, tipping itself, you know, forward, backwards, side to side. Give it a couple minutes and it'll level itself. You can operate all of the jacks um, individually and manually if you ever need to. So you can, if you just would rather do it manually, you can do that as well. What's nice is that this is also going to have an auto hitch feature. So basically the camper will remember where it was before you auto leveled it. So if you hit the auto, hit, uh, auto hitch button, it'll actually bring the camper right back to the height of the fifth wheel hitch in your truck, which is really nice. Okay, on the side here, this is going to be most of your water access right here. So this is going to be just a holder for your spray nozzle, which is going to hook up right here. That's going to have hot and cold water. You're going to have nice, easy access to your winterizing valves. So this valve on the left is going to be for your water pump. So you can see you've got this hose here. And the valve has two options, normal flow or winterize. So when you're ready to put antifreeze in the camper, you can just flip this to winterize, and then your water pump will draw from this hose right here, making it nice and easy. And then your water heater bypass, it bypass is on a similar valve. So before you run antifreeze, you can just flip that to bypass, so that way the antifreeze does not fill up your water heater. On the right side here, we're going to have your battery disconnect switch for the camper. So whenever you're not using the camper, you can flip that to the off position so that your batteries aren't draining while you're not using the camper, which is a very nice feature. Down below here, this is going to be your fresh water tank fill. So that cap just unscrews. You can put your fresh water hose in there and fill up the tank. It is going to be a big tank on this fifth wheel. It's going to be about 90 gallons, so it holds plenty of water. And then right next to it here is going to be your city water connection. So if you're camping um, somewhere where you have access to a freshwater spigot, you can hook a hose right up to there and use water that way. Below that is going to be your black tank flush port. So when you're emptying your sewer drain or sewer tanks, you can hook a freshwater hose up to there and it will spray water into your black tank and help flush that out, help keep it clean. Uh, we talked about your winterizing hose here. So again, that's going to be right next to your black tank flush. And then these two valves here, these are going to be your low point drains. So that's going to be basically the lowest point that the water lines pass through. So you can crack open those drains and it will uh, drain most of the water out of your water lines. Lastly, you do have this access panel here. So you can unscrew this and pop that out and then run your hoses up underneath the camper and hook them up here so that way you can keep this door closed and locked if you want. Okay, to the right of that, you're going to have your shore cord. So this is going to be a 50 amp camper. So you do have a big hefty 50 amp cord. One nice thing about that though is it is on a power reel. So you can just grab it and pull it out. And then when you're ready to retract it, just hit the switch and it will automatically reel the hose back up. So there is an access hole here. So you can run the cord through the hole there and then keep your door shut and locked. And then that cord is going to be about 25 feet long. So to the right of that is going to be your water heater. So this is going to be a 16 gallon suburban water heater. It is going to be a two way water heater. So you can run it using propane gas or 110 volt electricity. And you can select that using the switches inside that we'll show you. Here we've got a 
nice work light, nice and bright. And that is just above the sewer drain area. <clears throat> so that's nice. So you do have the sewer drain here. It is one drain for the entire camper. So you've got your black and gray waste one handles tucked up underneath the skirting, nice and out of the way. So nice and out of the way, and they'll both drain right out of there. Moving around, you've got your living room slide out here. And then moving towards the back of the camper, you do have a ladder to the roof, so it is a full walk-on roof, so you can get up there and do things like check the seals, keep, uh, keep your solar panels clear, different things like that. You do have a hollow bumper here, so great for sewer hose storage or whatever else you'd like to tuck in there. The Arctic Fox fifth wheels are going to come standard with a receiver hitch. Okay. So those are going to be rated for 250 pounds. Um, so great for a bike rack or storage platform, things like that. We have been able to also have these certified um, to be able to pull boats and things like that. But from the factory, they are not certified to do that. So that is something you would have to do after the fact. So that's everything on the inside. So next we'll, we'll show you the inside. Okay, so here we are inside the 29.5T. So come in the entry door here, and then right away to your right, you're going to have this door which flips open to reveal your main control panel. So you're going to have a few things in here. These are going to be monitor switches. So basically as you use water and your holding tanks fill up, you can press and hold those buttons. The more full your holding tanks get, the more LED lights will illuminate. You can check those there. You can also check your battery level right here although there is a more accurate way to do that, which I'll show you in just a minute. You've got two switches for your water heater. So as I mentioned, the water heater can be operated off of propane gas or 110 volt electricity. So both of those switches are there. You just flip them and the water heater will turn on. Here you've got the switch for your water pump. So if you're using water from the holding tank, you can just flip that on right there. Here you've got the porch light. So that's going to be an exterior light um, to help illuminate your camp space a bit more. And then you've got an entry light right here. So this will be your first light as you come inside the door with that switch right there. Two switches. This one on the left is going to be for your slide out, the main one. The slide out uh, for the bed slide up front, that's going to be in a different location, which we'll show you. So this is going to be the switch for your main big living room slide out. And then you've also got the switch for your power awning right here. Lastly, you do have the switch to start and stop the generator if you were to add that to the camper. So you can start and stop it using this switch here. And then you also have an hour meter here to tell you how long the generator's been run for, which is nice for keeping track of things like oil changes, filter changes, things like that. Up above that, you're gonna have some extra light switches. So cap light, um, you do have uh, uh, kind of built-in molded lights in the front. So you can turn those on here. And then these two switches are gonna be more exterior lights on either side. You do have a nice storage access here. So this is going to be just, just another access door um, to the same storage that's gonna be up above your sink. And down below that, you're gonna have your kitchen countertop here. If you open this up, the camper does come with a waste basket and you've got a nice little access to that. So if you're cooking or doing something like that, you just take that out, throw something away, nice and easy. You're going to have some power outlets down here. The kitchen lights are going to be on a dimmer switch, which is very nice. You can control the lighting there. And then you have an awning light switch here. So when you, again, when you extend your power awning, it does have a bright LED light strip in it. You turn that on and off right there. In the rear of the camper, we're going to have two Thomas Payne recliners, um, swivel recliners. So those are nice. You can move them around, put them wherever you'd like, and then they do recline manually um, just with a pull string on the side right there. Nice big picture window in the back. So lots of natural light coming into this camper, as well as some nice overhead storage up top. Moving around, this is, whole area is going to be the slide out. So you can see we've got Thomas Payne theater seats so again, these are going to recline as well. And again, those are going to be manual just on a pull string right here. 
However, if you do have 110 volt power where you're camping, these do have some additional features such as heated seats, um, massage, and then some lights. They also come with little TV trays that you can put in here. So if you are sitting here, you have a spot to put a beverage or food or whatever else you'd like. You've got some storage in the center console here as well. So great for tucking a blanket. There are those TV trays I mentioned. Okay, this camper is going to have the optional uh, freestanding table and chairs. So you can get these Arctic Foxes with either the table and chairs like this or the traditional uh, booth dinette. This does have the table and chairs. So these chairs are going to have a little bit of storage underneath them for little odds and ends you might have. And then this table does actually have an extension. So if you undo the latch underneath, this actually will pull out and extend just like that to give you some extra space. Nice overhead lighting, so you've got nice bright light uh, while you're eating or doing whatever else at the table. Uh, moving across the way from the slide out to the passenger side of the trailer, you've got your kitchen area. So a nice big double basin sink. This is going to be kind of an oversized sink, which is very nice. Solid surface countertops, as well as real wood cabinetry and all these Arctic Foxes. Nice big storage area under the sink as well. So these fifth wheels do come standard with a convection microwave. You do have a traditional RV oven as well, but you also have the convection op option in the microwave. And it is a nice big microwave, so you can fit quite a bit in there. You're going to have this nice looking Furion cooktop so that is going to just be sparked using this button here so you can just turn these to light and spark it and you can spark all three burners using that the oven as well you can just light using this knob here just turn it to the ignite button and give it some time and it'll spark and light on its own also in the kitchen area here you're going to have three switches these are going to be for your heated holding tanks so you can see you've got one for each tank, fresh, gray, and black. So in colder weather, you can flip those on and that'll help keep your water tanks from freezing. These are gonna be 12 volt heating pads and they are gonna be full size pads that cover up the entire bottom of the tank. And on top of that, the tanks are going to be wrapped in fiberglass insulation. So they are well heated, well insulated to help keep them from freezing in colder weather. Uh, this is just going to be an accent light. You've got some tow lighting in the kitchen. And you've also got a switch for your ceiling fan right here. So the ceiling fan is going to be operated off of 110 volt power. So as long as you're plugged into shore power, you can flip that switch and operate the ceiling fan, which is above us in the kitchen here. Down below the oven, you're gonna have a few things. You're gonna have a couple distribution panels. So this panel here is going to be all of your circuit breakers. So everything that operates off of 110 volt electricity is going to be on a breaker and it's going to be located right here. Next to it is going to be your fuse panel. So most, not all, but most of the fuses in the camper are going to be located right there. They are all labeled, so it's nice and easy to see what's what. And if a fuse does blow, it has a red LED light that lights up to let you know which fuse is blown. Okay, moving farther forward in the camper, you've got your nice big double bay refrigerator. So it is big like a residential fridge, but it is still going to be a two-way fridge. So it'll operate off of propane gas or 110 volt electricity. Um, and this is going to be a Norcold refrigerator. <coughs> Below the fridge, you're going to have your furnace unit. So the furnace itself is going to be right here. It is going to be ducted throughout the camper but that's where the unit itself is. Moving around, so now we're kind of in the middle of the camper, getting up towards the bedroom area. You're going to have your nice TV. This does pull out, so you've got this latch here, you can pull down on that, and that will release the TV. So you can pull it out, swivel it, arrange it however you like. You do have a 12 volt charging station right behind the TV, so with USB outlets, and then your cigarette lighter style outlet there and then 
on the right side, you're going to have a few different things. So this right here is going to be your solar charge controller. So like I mentioned, the camper does come standard with 45 watts of solar. There's plenty of room for more. And this is going to help monitor and regulate the solar power um, from the camper. So you can program this depending on what type of battery you have. So this is compatible with lead acid, AGM, lithium, all that stuff. And this will actually give you a constant readout of your battery voltage. So this will give you the exact battery voltage. So where that um, little monitor with the LED light inside the entry door will give you a rough idea, this will give you an exact voltage. It will also show you your charging current and amps, amp hours used, things like that. Down below you're going to have your thermostat. So this will control your furnace and your air conditioner. Um, as I mentioned, the furnace is ducted through the floor. The air conditioner is ducted through the ceiling. This is a 50 amp camper, so there is uh, room and prep for a second air conditioner. This one just comes with one, but you can always add a second one if you want it. Next to it, this is going to be a remote for the fantastic fan in the living room area. So it's going to be up kind of next to our ceiling fan right here. And you can actually activate it and turn it on and off just with this remote here. So just point the remote at the fan, hit power, and it'll kick on. What's also nice about this remote is you can adjust a few things. You can adjust the speed of the fan. You can adjust the temperature so it actually does have a thermostat in it. So you can set the interior temperature of the camper. Once the camper cools to that temperature, the fan will shut off. You can select whether air blows in or out different things like that and it is rain sensing so if raindrops do start falling and get on it it'll shut off automatically and close okay so that's all going to be back behind the tv area there and then down below you do have some nice storage for different things okay so now we're going to move up into the overhang of the fifth wheel, more towards the bed area. We are going to pass through our bathroom area, so the shower is going to be on the left. It is a nice big shower as far as RV showers go. Nice little bench in there so you can sit down if you'd like. So your shower is going to be right there. And then on the right, as you come up into the bedroom area, is going to be your water closet. So your toilet is going to be in there, as well as your sink, some more storage, for bath towels and things like that. You are going to have another fantastic fan in the bathroom. And then one other neat thing in the bathroom is you're going to have your light switch on the wall here and then right next to that light switch is actually going to be a second switch for your water pump. So the water pump is on a three-way switch so if you turn the pump on um, down by the entry door you can turn it off here or vice versa so you know if you're traveling and just want to pop up here into the bathroom you can turn the pump on and off just right here which is very nice okay so out in the main area here um, this is going to be a king size bed which is very nice in a camper um, you are going to have some reading lights up above there windows on either side of the bed which create a nice cross breeze you do have another fantastic fan um, in the bedroom here. The remote for that is right next to the bed, so you can control the fan just laying right in bed. Here you do have space for a TV. Obviously this camper does not have it. You can order it right from the factory with the TV, or you can add it at any time after the fact. You've got all the prep for it right there. Storage on either side. Nice wardrobe storage here. Nice big drawers. For all your different clothes. You are going to have kind of a laundry hamper type area here so you can stick dirty laundry and things in there. Uh, much like the living room area the kitchen or uh, excuse me the uh, bedroom lights are also going to be on a dimmer switch um, right next to the TV right here. And then this is going to be the front of the camper and you see this is actually going to have a nice great big closet. So lots of room for shoes, plenty of space for hanging different things. You can see these fifth wheels do come complimentary with a couple of lawn chairs, which is a nice touch. 
This fifth wheel does have washer dryer prep in the corner. So we have plenty of people that live full time in these units, so you can add the optional washer dryer if you need. It's all prepped for that. And then one other thing in the bedroom here, up above the bed you do have this nice big skylight so you can let lots of natural light into the bedroom. Otherwise, if you're sleeping, you don't want that light in there, you can close that with this blackout curtain, which does work very well to keep light out. So that's a nice little touch to help the space feel more bright and open when you want it to.